Hello, denizens of the internet. Well, I've got a very special Hackintosh episode for you. I, I know what you're saying and thinking. I, oh my God, finally a Hackintosh episode. I'm sick and tired of his family stuff and his comedy stuff and his business stuff. I want a Hackintosh episode. Well, I'm giving you a Hackintosh episode. And right in front of you, right, you're looking at it right now, is the technological doppelganger to Apple's top of the line. Top of the line. iMac, how does it compare? Price, performance. I will tell you, stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, look, um, I was pretty happy hackintoshing away on my uh, computer that I, I had built uh, almost two years ago, a year and a half ago uh, now, uh, with the 4790K Intel i7 chip and the R9280X uh, AMD graphics card. It was working just fine, and it was rendering 4K video um, just dandy, and I really didn't need another computer. But um, uh, as fate would have it, uh, suddenly uh, it came upon me. I got a chance to, uh, well, I got, I got a, a Gigabyte Z170X ATX motherboard with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I have all these other, you know, parts already in my existing computer. So all I needed to do was buy an i7-7700K, uh, top of the line, uh, which is exactly the same chip that's in the iMac, the top of the line iMac. Um, plus, uh, you know, the top of the line iMac has got an uh, uh, RX 580 AMD graphics card. So I went out and got one of those. Now, both of those were on sale. I got a very good deal on them. And so I had an opportunity to build an exact copy. Well, not quite an exact copy, but near as damn it, to Apple's flagship iMac. Uh, does a Hackintosh actually give you more? And w at what kind of prices? Uh, how does it compare pricing-wise? So I thought that was pretty interesting. Plus, I, I wanted a speedier computer for all the video that I'm editing, because every single uh, second count. but uh, counts. But is, is it that much faster? And is it worth uh, you know, upgrading? That was what I was interested in, in trying to uh, figure out, and I thought it'd be an interesting, you know, video for you. So let's uh, bring up some of the benchmarks. Uh, I have to say that one of the things that is bad about hackintoshing is is that uh, we get the disease, we pick up the same disease um, that um, many PC uh, users have, and that is we need to benchmark everything. Everything has to have a number, and then we need to know how much better every single little thing that we, we do, and the voltage, Huji, what's it, and, and stuff like that. Back when I was just owning uh, Macintosh, I didn't really care about benchmarking anything. I just did my work, but now I do my work, and I benchmark any, everything because I'm a, a benchmarking whore, okay? I, I admit it. I totally, totally admit it. So what are uh, some of the benchmarks uh, between the... Uh, old system and this uh, in this new system. Well, uh, let's start with a very popular benchmarking tool, Cinebench, uh, which does both the CPU and the GPU. And the previous OpenGL score was uh, about 125 frames per second versus the new system that uh, topped out at uh, 143, 143 and a half frames per second. The uh, CPU score on the old system was 912, and the new CPU score uh, is a very respectable 1045. So uh, there you go. Um, uh, that uh, overall, from a percentage point of view, um, on the GPU scale was a 15% boost in performance and a CPU boost of 14.5%. So now I did not run this uh, 15 times and average it. I wrote, I, I just ran it once, goddammit. Not interested in, in spending my entire life benchmarking stuff. Now the other thing I tried was the um, Heaven Unigen test. That's a sort of a game engine uh, test. And just from a frame rate point of view, the old system uh, got an average frame rate of uh, 79. Um, frames per second, and the new one got an average of 88. Okay, okay, so let's finally get to the part of the video that you're really interested in, is how does Paul's iMac compare to Apple's iMac? Well, let's use the Geek Pench scores that they have online. You'll see right here that Apple's uh, top-of-the-line iMac scores at the top of all their desktop computers except for their uh, old trash and toshes. But where does Paul's iMac fit into uh, this, uh, you know, Geekbench score list? Let's let's take a look and it's ba bang right above Apple's top of the line iMac. Look at that. Beautiful. And it's nicely written too. You can see that. So um, uh, uh, now here are the scores. 
Uh, the 27 inch iMac, the real one, is 19,345 um, units, and uh, Paul's iMac is 21,093. So that's a lot more. That's like 1,700-ish uh, more. Uh, I should have done the math ahead of time. It would have made for a much better video, but I don't care. It's not the kind of videos I make. I don't make good videos, and you already know that. So, and how does it uh, compare to the Trash and Tosh, which it's not a fair comparison, but uh, the 8-core 300 gigahertz Trash and Tosh is 22,143. Um, that's uh, peanuts. Uh, how does it compare in terms of pricing? Where does it all come out in the wash in terms of pricing? Because I know that's what you want to see. The iMac, similarly outfitted, came to $3,300. Uh, Paul's iMac came to $2,060. So um, that's a considerable uh, difference in price. That's a, a $1,240 uh, difference. Now, uh, for that price, you get a beautifully designed computer that will be very reliable, and you have Apple's warranty, and all those good things that I don't have. But to be quite frank, the deciding factor, for me at least, between buying a real Mac and building a Hackintosh isn't really the price, because that's not a huge delta for me, um, but it's the fact that you're not getting uh, the most out of the components that Apple puts into their box. That really bugs me. Because of thermal throttling, you're not going to be able to uh, overclock this wonderful processor, the 7700K. You will not be able to overclock it. And so why put it into the machine in the first place if you're not going to be able to get the full benefit um, uh, of it? So, uh, you know, and also the 580. Uh, I would be really surprised if the RX 580 in this uh, Mac and the 27-inch Mac actually performs to the same level as, as mine does. Uh, the downside is that it's a Hackintosh and uh, you have to know what you're doing. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, uh, this install at the very beginning uh, was a challenge, but uh, once I got all the pieces working, uh, it actually was maybe one of the easiest uh, Sierra installs that I have uh, ever done. So, was it worth it? Well, I would say yes. I mean, uh, overall, the speed improvements in the areas that I needed in terms of my productivity have worked out really, really well. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe and also hit the little bell thing because then you're going to get emails directly into your cortex with regards to every single time I bring out something new. So we'll see you and thank you very much for watching.